Good evening, everyone. Welcome to worship for this Wednesday, August the 18th, 2021. We gather this evening for Vespers as the people of Messiah Evangelical Lutheran Church in New Berlin, Pennsylvania, gathering through the internet across space and time. I look forward to worshiping with you this evening. Or perhaps this morning, if this is morning prayer for you. I am in North Carolina right now. By the time this is premiering on Facebook, I'm probably already there. My mom's brother, uh, Dwight Hollowell, died last Friday, and the funeral is tomorrow, uh, Thursday afternoon, down in Goldsboro, North Carolina. So I'm uh, on the way down. I'll be back on Friday in plenty of time to join you all in worship on Sunday, hopefully in the park, if the, as long as the rain holds off for us. It's going to be a great day out there together. We worship this evening with Vespers in Evangelical Lutheran Worship, beginning on page 308. Most of the words that you'll, you'll need to follow along are going to be on the screen in front of you. I invite you to light a candle and prepare your hearts and minds for worship. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set lights in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, for you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures, we give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Continue with Psalm 141. Let my prayer rise before you as incense the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evildoers. But my eyes are turned to you, Lord God. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Our scripture reading this evening is from 1 Kings chapter 8. Now this is immediately preceding the bulk of the First Kings readings we're going to hear in worship on Sunday. Uh, we'll hear some parts of the reading today in worship on Sunday too. And it tells of San, uh, Solomon moving the Ark of the Covenant into the temple in Jerusalem that he has built. For, Sol for David took the Ark to Jerusalem and actually to the city of David, which is a small which is just outside of Jerusalem, um, and 
kept it in the tabernacle, which is how the ark had moved about all throughout time uh, since the time of the Exodus. And the Ark of the Covenant is considered to be, by the people of Israel, the location of God. It's a very ornate box that holds the stone tablets of the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, the covenant given from God to Moses on Sinai, and shows forth the promise of God to be with God's people always. And throughout the conquest of Canaan, the time in the exile before the conquest of Canaan, and up till David took it to Jerusalem, the Ark of the Covenant led God's people into battle as well. It was seen as the place of God and God giving God's protection and providence. David wanted to make it a more permanent home, but was, but was prevented from that. Solomon has built a temple, and we'll hear more about that a little bit on Sunday. But today, we will hear of this movement in and some of the things that happen. And I'll talk a little bit more after I read. So, a reading from 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 1 through 21. Then did Solomon assemble the elders of Israel, all the heads of the tribes, the patriarchal chieftains of the Israelites, round King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from the city of David, which is Zion. And every man of Israel assembled round Solomon in the month of Ethanim, which is the seventh month at the festival. And all the elders of Israel came, and the priests carried the Ark, and they brought up the Ark of the Lord and the tent of meeting and all the sacred vessels that were in the tent, and the priests and the Levites brought them up. And King Solomon and all the community of Israel who had gathered round him were with him before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be numbered for their abundance. And the priests brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place, to the sanctuary of the house, to the holy of holies, beneath the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim sheltered the ark and its poles from above. And the poles extended, and the ends of the poles could be seen from the holy place in the front of the sanctuary, but they could not be seen from without. And they have been there to this day. There was nothing in the ark except the two stone tablets that Moses had put there on Horeb, which the Lord had sealed as a covenant with the Israelites when they came out of the land of Egypt. And it happened when the priests came out of the holy place that a cloud filled the house of the Lord. And the priest could not stand up to minister because of the cloud, for the Lord's glory filled the house of the Lord. Then did Solomon say, The Lord meant to abide in thick fog. I indeed have built you a lofty house, a firm place for your dwelling forever. And the king turned his face and blessed all the assembly of Israel with all the assembly of Israel standing. And he said, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, who spoke with his own mouth to David, my father, and with his own hand has fulfilled it, saying, From the day that I brought out my people Israel from Egypt, I have not chosen a town from all the tribes of Israel to build a house for my name to be there. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. And it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Lord said to David, my father, Inasmuch as it is, was in your heart to build a house for my name, you have done well, for it was in your heart. Only you will not build the house, but your son, who issues from your loins, will build the house for my name. And the Lord has fulfilled his word that he spoke. And I arose in place of David my father and sat on the throne of Israel as the Lord spoke, and I have built the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And I have set there a place for the ark which is in the covenant of the Lord and that he sealed with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. There's a motif in this piece of the Lord's glory being a dense cloud that fills the land. That's a poetic imagery from Hebrew scriptures that is reverence of 
God's presence being there. And we see that in parts of the Christian scriptures when there is a, the cloud at the top of the mountain in the transfiguration when Jesus goes up to the high place there. And it is interesting how Solomon uses this, uses putting the, building the temple and putting the ark in the temple to contain the power of God. And I'll talk more about that on Sunday. It is also interesting how he is trying to consolidate his power and authority over Israel as the true heir of David, and not just the heir of David, but the heir of the promises God made to David, and asserting that God's promises to David are carried forward into all the people of Israel through Solomon, not through any of the other sons, for Solomon is the one who was chosen as the heir. On Sunday, we'll pick up with verse 22 and hear what, hap what happens and hear more of Solomon's reflections on building a temple for God. And our worship this evening continues with the gospel canticle, the song of Mary the Magnificat. Join me in the refrains as I read the verses. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For you, O Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me. And holy is your name. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. You have looked, have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the health of the creation, for abundant harvest that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public servants, the government, and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, and for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all servants of the church, for this assembly and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Julia and Frank, Mark and Barry, servants of God and brothers and sisters in our assembly, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for health and well-being for Steve and Macy and Maida and Nicholas and Gail and Kay and Ron and Ollie and Daisy and Valda and Betty and Elaine and Jeff and Caitlin and Logan and Maddie and Hubie. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for protection in the time of affliction for the people of Haiti and Afghanistan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest. Rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you through Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered in the one by the Holy Spirit, we are bold to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Go forth in peace, my friends, to love and serve the Lord.